If you don't use a Samsung phone but prefer an iPhone, guess what? You're still using a Samsung's product. And even if your laptop or TV isn't made by Samsung, they've still got a hand in it. So what exactly are these products? And how has Samsung managed to be everywhere even if you don't see their name? Samsung is much more than a phone and electronics brand. Many companies depend on Samsung, for example, Apple. Samsung is more than a company. I mean, which company has their own city? But that's nothing. This is the largest building in the world, Burj Khalifa. Guess who built it? That's right. Before Burj Khalifa, Petronas Towers were the biggest building in the world. Guess who built that? What you won't believe is that this tank was also made by Samsung. And let's not talk about hospitals, hotels and universities they own. Join us in this crazy ride where we will explore what Samsung made and why. To answer the question, first we need to see the unbelievable beginnings of this giant. In 1938, the company started by not selling the world's first phone, but rather noodles and vegetables. The founder of this grocery store was a then 20-year-old Korean named Lee Byung-chul. Lee said that he started Samsung for only one reason – to set a goal for himself. And that's why he had a bigger vision for Samsung. You can see that in the name of the company. In Korean, Samsung means free stars. Now, if you see a product review and it has free stars, it's a meh product. But in Korea, the number free means something big and popular. And it was big and popular. They had 40 workers trading and exporting items in and around the city of Daegu. But soon, everything would change. The company would be moved to Seoul because the Korean War started. Lee got an idea to establish a sugar factory. Samsung went from importing and exporting noodles, vegetables and dry fish to producing their own sugar. But Lee wanted more. At that time, he saw an opportunity for wool. Using profits from the sugar business, he decided to create and open the largest woolen mill in the country. This allowed Samsung to expand into a new industry, the textile industry and began creating clothes. This strategy proved to work. Lee decided to push this strategy even more in an industry you couldn't think of. From grocery store to sugar to textile, Lee decided to go into the insurance business. This was so successful that even today, Samsung is the largest insurance provider in Korea. These moves made Lee Byung-chul the richest man in Korea. He was so rich that in the 1960s, he acquired three of the largest commercial banks in Korea, insurance firms and businesses that specialized in cement and fertilizers. Lee became the go-to guy in Korea for business. If you need money, he has a bank. If you need protection, he has insurance. Everything went well, but it will get much better. They had a meeting and the point of the meeting was to decide which industry to go next. Samsung executives decided to go into the electronics business. Samsung started to produce black and white TVs. Soon they would become the world's number one manufacturer of TVs. With this success, they decided to make microwaves, air conditioners, TV with color and lastly personal computers. The problem was they were too reliant on imports so they decided to create their own chips. Now they had full control over the supply chain. This is not the end. They were so successful that they decided to sell those chips globally. Companies still use Samsung chips today. For example, Apple uses Samsung memory chips in their phones. That's why you're using a Samsung product if you use an iPhone. With chips, Samsung didn't stop. This is nothing. There's much more. They decided again to go to a completely new industry. So Samsung Heavy Industries was started. They make giant ships and today are one of the largest mega ship builders in the world. Not only the largest, but most efficient also. The building center is over 400 million square feet in size. That's not all. Samsung Constructions builds bridges, tunnels and buildings. They made Burj Khalifa and Petronas Towers, the first and the second tallest building in the world. But they didn't stop there. They own South Korea's largest theme park, called Everland, that comes with a zoo. For some time, they created military equipment, tanks and jet engines. Samsung owns hotels, universities and hospitals. They even own a place in Korea called Samsung Town. The main question is, 
why. Why everything Samsung touches turns into gold? How a small company that started selling groceries became this big? The answer? Government. Some businesses in Korea, including Samsung, got favorable loans and special tax break from the government to expand the economy. The government reduced taxes to 50% to companies operating in the electronics business, and they banned outside electronics companies. This left room for massive growth because the government gave them basically free money. As you can see, they used that free money in the right way. Lee became friends with the president. Funny thing is that the whole family has a history of bribing the president and the government, from Lee's son to his grandson. But that's a topic for another video. With close ties with the government, aggressive expansions and heavy investment into research and development, Samsung became what it is today, 30th world's largest company that makes 17% of Korea's GDP. To summarize it all up, today Samsung is made from 80 companies, which are commercially and legally independent but unified. We can split them into five categories. Engineering and construction, electronics, finance, chemicals and others. As any other big company, they are heavily investing into AI and virtual reality. Give a thumbs up if you watch this video on a Samsung device. If not, then comment which brand. It's hard to imagine Korea without Samsung. Now, what are the next steps for Samsung? We will see.